I didn't like the spotlight, so I had to put on this game face. It's like this other person came out, but I had to be that way to compete, and I was very drawn in, and um, people maybe thought it was aggressive or competitive, but really I was competing against myself, and I hated the spotlight. So the only way I could do it was really kind of put blinders on and really retract within myself. I know that sounds kind of crazy, but I'm a very, very emotional person, and I wear my emotions on my sleeve to my detriment. But I'm incredibly, when I love something, you know it. And when I don't like something, yeah. And probably it was pretty obvious that I didn't like, you know, video cameras and pictures. And I especially didn't want like a lot of praise because I just did it because I was passionate about it. And then plus it takes away to me, everyone talks about it. It's like, what about all the other people who do it? The finish line doesn't feel any different. I started walking the day I turned nine months and then didn't stop moving. I loved to be outdoors. I was just very active. I loved to explore. I mean, I was just fascinated with light. It's kind of funny. I just thought being outdoors was creative. I'm all or none. My mother always said there's a switch. And so when I got in college, I really loved the classes were fascinating. So I just stopped running. I really enjoyed my schoolwork, and I, I just, the, the, I liked because you could get be like a wallflower and take these huge classes and be the last person there, and all the people were very fascinating. Then I graduated, decided I wanted to do something worth finishing. I just wanted to find something I felt good about. I saw an ad in Competitor Magazine, American River 50 in 1985, and I was like, no way anyone could run that far. That seems like insane. And I only trained for about six weeks. I had no clue. I just saw oh, there's an aid station every five miles. I'll just run. It was 110 degrees. It was totally miserable. So that was my first 50. It wasn't, I was never going to do one again. I, I don't know how I finished. In September of, I guess, what was it, 85, Aaron Warnham, he took me on the first 30 miles to Western States. Honestly, it feels like that run happened yesterday. I don't know what it was, but I just felt at home. I felt free. I felt the course. I fell. I, I left him. I mean, I was like, we're running. I'm like, Aaron, I, I'm having way too much fun. And he said, it's not marked. I didn't get lost. I, I got to Duncan. I was so out of water. I just remember like lying down and putting my mouth in the stream and drinking like a dog. It was the best time, and I get to the top, and then all I couldn't stop talking about was Western States. Oh my God, that's all, I had to do it. I just feel at home there. I'm a California girl, there's so much history. Crossing the Sierras, the gold country, the valley, the feel of the heat. Everything in California is like in this 100 miles. The people, of course, I love the soil. I just feel different there. I mean, I still go up there all the time. I don't have to race it. The racing part I never liked. I never really liked that, but it was kind of a challenge, I guess. But I just love that trail. There's just something, and I'm not a Zen person, but I don't know, There's it's home. I feel at home there. You know, they put so much onto the winners, and I'm like, oh man, there's so many other great stories of people doing the race. Life is full of all sorts of great characters, and I just felt like maybe I was taking away from someone else. I thought it would hurt to come back and be on the course and watch people, but it was, I realized how much it wasn't the winning or the competing, it was the camaraderie and the people who do it. And there's, there's like something magical. When that gun goes off, you couldn't bottle that energy. There's no other race I've ever felt 
where just the intensity and the joy and the and just the anticipation of what's going to happen is magical. You know, the Born to Run book, it is what it is, but what it really, really did was get so many people into running that it's fine, but all that stuff written about me is like, you know, it's great historical fiction. It, you know, it did hurt. I couldn't even really finish the chapter, to be quite honest. And so, and you know, people seem to like it. So I guess I can't make an opinion on it. It just seemed from what people were saying, it kind of was like, ouch, really? You know, the thing about the White Witch. I mean, in a way, I'm really proud of that I ran that, because I just went there to like break 18 hours. No one really got it, and maybe it's because I'm not very articulate, but I always just thought, as women or anyone, you should just be seeing how good the Yuba as a person can do. And so this whole idea, I know a lot of people would like to say, oh yeah, I went out there and I was busting it so I could beat all these boys, prove what women can do. And I was like, no, that isn't who I am. It wasn't what motivated me. So I guess I really don't want to be, more it's more what I don't want to be remembered for, and I don't want to be remembered for that. I want to be remembered as someone who f was trying to be the best she could be. I really think I'm someone who loves life. I just love exploring and I love going into the mountains. And it's such a beautiful world. I mean, there's so many great trails and I want to be out enjoying what life has to offer. There's a lot of good stuff in this world.